I'm going to start out with uh, probably what's on most people's mind, and that's the FAA financing status. And I got to tell you that um, at this point, uh, we are in the terminal area. So that means we've taken off, we've been en route the last two years, we've got several things done. We now are near our destination, terminal area, let's call it 50 miles away. Uh, we're not on final approach yet, but there is some convective weather ahead. And that's probably the best way to describe where we are right now. Well, that's, you know, we weren't going to allow the fox in charge of the chicken coop, and we're not going to allow it today either. My intention is to give it a decent burial. Those are the big challenges ahead of us, not nickel and diming the system to death as this proposal would do. I do not believe that the FAA has made a strong case for its pr proposed changes. Our focus needs to be on making the system better. It's working pretty darn well. We don't need to get our sledgehammer out, which is this very costly system, to drive a carpet tack. It would seem the FAA is gulping the airline Kool-Aid. Well, those are certainly our friends in Congress. I wish all of them were this way. If you're from Minnesota, North Carolina, or uh, from Southern Illinois, those are certainly people we want you to congratulate uh, for their help in this whole uh, effort. Basically, what's happened this year is uh, Congress, the FAA, trying to divide and conquer general aviation. You know, those two words, they don't really define what we are, all the way from a Piper Cub to a Boeing business jet, which is basically a reconfigured 737. But that's general aviation. Uh, a Part 91, owner-flown, company-owned, uh, and uh, professionally flown, uh, all the way from propeller airplanes to corporate aircraft. And that's what's been happening, trying to divide general aviation into, well, we'll take care of these people who buy avgas using fuel as a way to define us, or these people who buy turbine fuel. And they're using figures that are bogus figures. This business is 6% versus 97% versus 94, all invented on their part, uh, not following traditional methods of cost accounting of air traffic systems. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. But once again, to be very serious, these ads, these internet uh, links, etc., have all directed people to a website that you might want to take a look at, uh, if you have the stomach for it, uh, called smartskies.org. And basically, and let me just tell you how important it is to have you and a large AOPA membership, basically the airlines have no grassroots. Their employees are mad at hell of them. They cut their salaries, they've done this. So pretty hard to get people in the employee base to be writing Congress. So what they're trying to do is get the American public. Now the American public isn't real fond right now of airlines either. Delays, cancellations, um, uh, ticket prices high in some places, low in other places. So they've developed this website and they're directing everybody to this site and then telling them uh, to write Congress. And there's a lot of myths. The airlines would have you believe that general aviation is the cause for all the delays at the major airports. It's all about those GA aircraft. You know, a lot of it is about the airlines scheduling themselves. 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9.45, and I could go to the afternoon hour. But those times, in a survey done about three weeks ago, the airlines at O'Hare schedule more departures at those times than the airport can handle in their runway environment in visual flight rules conditions. So imagine now a wind condition that reduces the number of runways they can use or instrument conditions, and obviously passengers are waiting in line. And then we know this from our general aviation uh, flying, 70% of all the delays are caused by weather. There was a vote in the House, this made it through several committees in the House, and there was a vote in the House just two weeks ago 
And I'm proud to tell you on that side of Capitol Hill, they passed the House bill that we support by, as you can see, 267 to 157. So the bill without user fees, a small tax increase for Avgas, a, small, a slightly larger tax increase for turbine fuel, and a host of other good things about funding airports is now passed our House of Representatives. Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure brings to the House today an historic bill to address the needs of aviation today and into the future. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Now, back to Aero TV. Now, where our problem is, is the Senate. The Senate Commerce Committee passed a bill that we wrote up in the magazine, the website, and I'm not going to go through every single detail, but the Senate passed a bill that would put in a user fee for turbine aircraft. And I say that this time around, because imagine four years from now, the length of the bill would have trickled down to piston airplanes. Uh, tax cut for the airlines, the only aviation tax they pay, they'd eliminate. Turbine fuel tax going to 49 cents from 24 cents today, and once again, this user fee. So, uh, a Meridian, uh, TBM 700, as Jim Robbins talked about on uh, Thursday session, going from uh, Providence to Hartford for the convention would pay $25. A 747 from uh, Los Angeles to New York, $25. Doesn't seem quite the way to tax our system. This has been what we've been working on uh, for quite some time. And when the Senate Finance Committee voted, two senators who understand general aviation from Montana and Iowa, we came out with a very favorable bill. And I'm putting it up here now for you. The Avgas present rate, jet fuel uh, increase from 24 to 36 cents. Airlines keep their ticket tax and they actually get, and I love this, here they were trying for a tax break, they actually get a small increase uh, in a correction of international ticket tax. And once again, that fee is still there, but we hope to be able to take care of that in a different kind of way. Next, where do we face a full Senate vote? And at that time, on the floor, we hope there'll be an amendment to take out that user fee. Uh, our expectation is there'll be other amendments trying to put other things in. That's why I say there's convective weather ahead. And then when this is passed, it goes to a conference committee to bring both bills together. And then eventually, this has to be directed to uh, the White House, of course, like all bills. And we question, will it be vetoed or signed? I think that will be pretty much worked out in the conference committee, and we will not have that particular problem. 